tonight on a special edition of 2020. Natalie Holloway, you're in Vandersloot. An explosive new account. It wasn't the night that I lost any sleep over it. She'll never be found. What went through your mind when you heard Joran Vandersloot say, she'll never be found? You son of a... Tonight, the top secret story of laying the bait for Joran to bite. The five-month sting operation. A car rigged with hidden cameras. 20 hours of tape. And the mysterious man Joran thought was his friend. Okay, now we got you, boy. The only place you'll see all the undercover video that could bring years of wondering and agony to an end. As Natalie's stunned mother watches Joran's callous description. Oh my gosh. For the very first time. Peter, I always thought that that Joran's life was already a living hell. But it's about to begin. But even now, one unanswered, terrifying thought. Is it possible? He disposed of my daughter's body while she was alive. Tonight, the final hours of Natalie Holloway. Reporting from Aruba, Elizabeth Vargas. And from Amsterdam, Chris Cuomo. Good evening. All eyes are on Aruba tonight to see what happens next after the explosive broadcast last night in Holland of a tape that has blown open the case of Natalie Holloway. Until now, the trail of evidence has stopped here at the beach. All footprints in the sand, real or otherwise, have been washed away in a tide of rumor and speculation. Tonight, all that may have changed. For that, we go to my colleague Chris Cuomo, who's in Amsterdam. Now, Elizabeth, investigators have always said without finding the body of Natalie Holloway, they'd almost need a confession to make a case in her disappearance. Well, tonight, investigators believe they may have just that. And coming from the mouth of the main suspect, no less, Jorn von der Sloot. As you can see, we've lit up parts of beautiful Amsterdam for you here tonight, but it's actually just about 3 o'clock in the morning. And while many of the people here sleep, their heads may be filled with images of Natalie Holloway and Jorn von der Sloot. Because while the U.S. was engrossed in the Super Bowl, they were watching a different type of TV event here. It's estimated that half the population of the Netherlands were watching a TV show that's kind of like America's Most Wanted here in Holland. A hidden camera investigation in which Joran von der Sloot admits he knows what happened to Natalie Holloway. In fact, he admits he watched her die. The fruit of a six-month undercover operation von der Sloot never saw coming. A Range Rover cruising the streets of Holland, tracked by GPS. In the passenger seat, one of the world's most notorious suspects, 20-year-old party boy, Joran von der Sloot. He's locked in a conversation with a man named Patrick, whom he thinks is his friend. But he is really a man on a mission, his goal to blow open Joran's three-year-old alibi in the Natalie Holloway case. And it's all on hidden camera. Patrick's words in yellow, Joran's in white. What happened to her? What the f happened to her? Joran, listen, I'm from Aruba. I know the beach. I'm telling you honestly, I know what happened to that girl. What happened then, Joran? Morta, she's dead, isn't she? Of course. The ocean's big, isn't it? Of course the sea is big, man. I just think that I've been incredibly lucky that she's never been found. Because if they found that girl, I'd be in deep this undercover operation is the brainchild of Peter de Vries, the most famous TV crime reporter in the Netherlands. He has his own show where he broadcasts the results of his sensational investigations of unsolved murders. I've done almost uh, 470 murder cases, but also a lot of disappearance. So uh, you can say I'm a specialist in this. And undercover operations like this, you know them well. My show uh, runs now for 13 years, and I can say we, we almost do it every month once. But his most recent expose has put him on the world's radar and given us an exclusive, a startling admission by the chief suspect in Natalie Holloway's disappearance. Joran von der Sloot knows what happened to Natalie Holloway. He knows exactly what happened in every detail. He knows where her body wound up. He knows what happened to her, where her body was, and everything he said to the police 
was a big lie. Late last year, De Vries was approached by a man with an incredible story. Patrick Van Der Aime said he had a possible breakthrough in the disappearance of Natalie Holloway in Aruba. Well, he came to me and I said, Joran is trusting me completely. And I think when he knows more of the Natalie case, he finally will tell me, are you interested? And I said, of course I'm interested. Stay as close to him as you can because this can be very important. And well, that's what he did. I knew what I was gonna do with him. And the plan changed a little bit in the process of time, of course, because uh, I have the rules and uh, I have to play my game. Patrick met Joran van der Sloot for the first time in a Dutch casino last year. More than two years of intense media coverage of the Holloway investigation had made Joran an instantly recognizable face in the Netherlands. It was a relationship that began with the word murderer. So I went over to him and the first thing I said to him was, Hey, Matong. That means from hey, murderer. But with a, with a funny kind of way, you know? And why did you say it that way? Because it's the truth. Uh, I, I never planned him for being my friend. He was never my friend. But you said it in a way that you thought he'd like it. Yeah. Using an Aruban language that no one else at the casino table would understand, Patrick is already working a ruse, drawing Joran close by playing hard to get. And it worked. Oh, definitely. And I walked away. I was smoking a cigarette, and then uh, two minutes later he came to me. And what did he want? Conversation. And you weren't surprised? Of course not. Why not? I don't know, because I attract some people. And when you saw him in the casino, you said, this is your chance. And I will finish him. Patrick says he and Joran become fast friends, and over the next three months, they see each other nearly every day in the Netherlands. They go for drives and talk, sometimes for six to eight hours at a time. Patrick, a self-described businessman, is playing the role of a kind of gangster, and it's a world he knows well. He once spent a year in prison on a drug-related charge. He entices Joran with a scheme to start a marijuana operation. Joran says he's interested and seems to view Patrick as a kind of underworld mentor. They make a pact about their discussions. Never talk, never talk. We don't talk. It's going to be you and me. We trust each other, and we never talk to anybody. And soon, Joran begins talking about Natalie Holloway. After two months, he wanted to tell me, but I told him I don't want to know this. I don't like this story. I don't want to know this story. Even though you were only dealing with Joran to get the truth about Natalie Holloway, you were like the only person in the world who would say, I don't care. Yeah, definitely. He didn't show any interest in the case. So Joran was a little bit amazed because most of the people meeting Joran will ask in already 10 minutes, well, tell me, did you do it or not? Patrick isn't ready to hear Joran spill the beans just yet because he knows nobody will believe him without proof of a recording. So he buys enough time to call Peter De Vries. He is not an actor. He's not an actor. You didn't train him for this. He came to you. He came to me. He is not a policeman. He is not a reporter. He is a businessman. So De Vries hired Patrick, an ex-con, to work undercover, paying him about $35,000 to date. De Vries and his crew meticulously built a high-tech trap inside a shiny new Range Rover SUV. They wire it with cameras, microphones, and recording devices. They even build in a GPS locator device so that Peter De Vries can follow Patrick and Joran. But before the Range Rover is ready to go, before the trap can be set, under arrest, Jorn van der Sloot, with De Vries' elaborate plan, suffers an unexpected setback. Three days before I was getting my car, he was gone. They arrested him. Oh, everybody was devastated. Van der Sloot was arrested for the second time. But two and a half weeks later, Jorn is released when Aruban authorities announced they've closed the case due to lack of evidence. The investigation into the disappearance of Natalie Holloway is over. Jorn believes he's now beyond the reach of the prosecutor. He decides to return to Holland. He calls his new best friend Patrick and gloats, not realizing he's now being recorded. They have nothing. I laughed at them, those investigators. I didn't say a word. I'll tell you some more stories when I get back.
and he said, well, I'm coming back home and uh, I'd like to see you and I have to talk, uh, I have to tell you quite a lot. And that's the moment we thought, nah, now it's going to happen. The day after he arrives in Holland, Jorn van der Sloot unwittingly climbs into a veritable rolling recording studio. He's impressed by Patrick's new Range Rover. This is awesome, Patrick. It's nasty. De Vries and his team are thrilled they finally have Joran right where they want him.